Well, now that would be a first world problem. <laughs> um, uh, it's certainly weird, and it's certainly um, it's the sort of thing that I have long worried about happening, uh, and now it's happening. So, in that respect, uh, not a script. More, it's it's like the world has reached into my head and stolen some of my nightmare fuel that's probably kept me awake for years. <laughs> Have you quietly been preparing for this your whole life with your anti back gels and your neuroses, do you think? Um, yes, on some level. I think, I think my little theory is that because I grew up in the... I was born in 1971, so I was like, you know, became fully sentient in the sort of 70s and 80s, and I expected a nuclear war to happen. I just expected that to happen. I watched things like sort of threads and stuff. And I thought, that's going to happen in my lifetime. And it's terrifying. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's, bound, it's definitely going to happen. And then you'd go outside and people were sort of walking their dog and thinking about kitchens. And everything seemed very calm. And that sort of cognitive dissonance, I found disturbing. And I think that's probably, I guess that's what sort of anxiety feels like for a lot of people, is this sort of disconnect between the calm sort of breezy nature of the world in general and the sort of the, the little uh, dark theatre show playing out in your head. So oddly, when something like this happens, when the worst actually happens, on some level, this is my experience, on some level, I can stop dreading the unknown and I get a sort of clarity, if that makes any sense. T tell me about the process. How do you get the, the, the comedy tone right at a time like this? Are there any places you won't go? In a way, I've, I've done lots of the wipe shows before, the end-of-year wipe shows. We often were dealing with very, very awful events. I remember one year in particular, we'd just finished the show and then we were coming back for a weekly show, January, first week of January, normally very quiet. There was the Charlie Hebdo massacre happened. Yeah. And so I found myself having to cover this massacre. And so, so in a way, you know, I, I'm kind of accustomed to grappling with that. And I think as long as you, there's something very cathartic about finding the humour in a situation. Um, and, you know, it's, it's frankly important to, it's important, it's, it's part of our humanity, obviously. It's, you know, every laugh is a little a minute in an escape hatch, isn't it? Um, from the sort of darkness that's surrounding us at the moment. I'm guessing that you're glued to the nightly press conferences now. Are, are you well, sort of... Yeah. Impressed with how open they've been? Well, yes and no. In that, I think that, like, I mean, there's a weird thing. This is a this is a weird thing. So, so you're watching a daily briefing, say, um, and for the first couple of weeks of all of this, I think I was very much glued to the news. I was sort of reading everything I could. I was the radio was constantly on, and then I thought, ah, oh, God, this is like it's 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 like eating fruit, isn't it? Like watching a lot of the news. It's good for you up to a point and then it leaves you, it gives you the shit, frankly. <laughs> so if you, apologies for saying that, but you, you, so you have to limit it. It's best to sort of eat it in small portions, the news. There seems to be a debate at the moment of, of what the media's role is at a time of crisis. Mm -hmm. And you've done, you've looked a lot at, in, in Newswipe at, at, yeah. at the media. Do you think, that the media has a duty to be patriotic. I mean, people are making parallels with war, aren't they? The media has to swing behind the state. Is that the right role in your mind? No. Obviously, there's a, there's a role in, you know, disseminating accurate information. There's a role in... Um, but there is, a, there is a role in providing comfort, I think. There's definitely a role in providing comfort. You look at... Um, and a sense of community. That doesn't necessarily have to be... You know, we're we're great because we're British. We're you know we're there's there's not much point I think in banging that drum and banging out banging on about what island we're on, um, you know. But I I do think it it, it it's a perfectly valid thing to um, to provide a sense of community and to um, to to provide entertainment and escapism at this time. Um, it's important. Um, uh, yeah, but I mean, the, 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 you know, patriotism, that's not the same thing as just blindly supporting the government um, or blindly criticising the government, is, is it? I mean, that's a different 
thing. Well, so tomorrow, when, when we yeah. when we watch the antiviral screen wipe, what mm. is the overriding emotion that you want people to feel? Is it? Do you want people to laugh or, or feel uncomfortable or? Uh, I don't want, <laughs> I definitely want them to laugh. <laughs> yeah, so you, you want them to laugh. I think, hopefully, um, hopefully, you know, and touch wood, we've got the, hope, hopefully we've got the tone right for, not for everyone, obviously, but, you know, um, I hope people will find it cathartic and I hope people will laugh at it. When I was, when I used to watch things like Spitting Image, say, in the 80s, and they would make jokes about things that scared me, like nuclear war um, or whatever, I, it would make me feel a little bit more sane that there was somebody else out there who who felt like that and was saying things like that in in some respect. So, you know, if if the show gives people two seconds of you know cracking half a smile, that's that's kind of a victory, I guess, at the moment. So hopefully that hopefully some uh, some form of release. Tell Cathartic you release. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely to speak to Don't you. Don't judge me on my bookshelves.